1969, the Reverend Maxwell's first wife was found dead in an automobile out here on Highway 22, just out of Alexander City. The lady he had married uh, was later found dead in a wrecked car. Later, a uh, nephew was found dead. that I'm doing this during my lunch break so that I'm not, but, and the reason I say that is I'm writing a book concerning this entire thing. Awesome. And uh, my involvement with this entire matter is far more personal than, than you might realize too. Uh, in 1969, the Reverend Maxwell's first wife was found dead in an automobile out here on Highway 22, just out of Alexander City. It appeared that the car had been wrecked, but upon closer examination of the body, they discovered that she had been murdered, as a matter of fact. Uh, a next door neighbor came forward and told the police that she had seen the Reverend Maxwell beating and choking uh, his wife that afternoon, shortly before she was found in the car dead. At some point after that, the Reverend Maxwell, although he had been arrested for her murder, sued the insurance company because he had a fairly substantial life insurance policy on her to uh, uh, collect the insurance proceeds. At that time, I was a student in law school and working full time for a company that did investigations for insurance companies. They asked me to interview Reverend Maxwell to basically uh, evaluate him as a witness so that if they had to go to trial, how he would you know, come across to a jury. Uh, Reverend Maxwell readily agreed to the interview, and he was the most polite, most soft-spoken, uh, most erudite uh, individual I ever interviewed during the course of my time with that company. Uh, very um, eloquent, uh, very well-read apparently, because his grammar and so forth were excellent. Uh, always straight-backed, always had on a suit and tie every time I saw him. Well, one of the little quirks to this whole story, and keep in mind, by the way, that uh, everybody's presumed innocent until proven guilty. Reverend Maxwell uh, was charged with the murder of that wife based on the neighbor's, the lady next door's testimony or, or statements to the police. Uh, while Reverend Maxwell was awaiting trial, the lady next door's husband died. She remarried, and she married Reverend Maxwell. <laughs> At that time in Alabama, a wife could not be made to testify against her husband under any circumstances. So the state's case went out the window, and he was found not guilty of the murder of that first wife. Uh, sadly, The lady he had married uh, was later found dead in a wrecked car. That uh, uh, the question was whether she died from the, you know, from the, the the wreck itself. But they could never determine her cause of death. He had insurance on her also. Later, a uh, nephew was found dead. He had insurance on that nephew. Uh, cause of death was never determined. Reverend Maxwell had a, well, it was his wife's actually adopted niece who lived with the two of them. And he had an insurance policy on her and she was found dead under a car as if she had been changing a tire and the car had fallen on her head. Medical examination showed that she was dead when she was put under the car. So it was really a clear cut murder situation. The Reverend Maxwell appeared at her funeral at a uh, chapel here in Alexander City. 
And um, I think he may have even given some sort of eulogy for the dead child, 15, 16 year old girl. Uh, he had sat back down in a pew and while he's sitting in the pew, her natural uncle stood up in front of him in the pew and shot the reverend in the face and killed him, of course. Well, he was charged with murder and Tom Young as the district attorney and myself as the assistant district attorney prosecuted the case before a jury here in Tallapoose County. They found him not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect uh, on the basis that he'd heard all these stories about relatives that the Reverend Maxwell had killed and, and uh, the things that he had been able to do with that. A lot of people believe that he was able to do voodoo. Uh, the only witnesses I found who can substantiate anything connected with the voodoo aspect of it, uh, it was a lady who said that he used to kill chickens and hang them around in his front yard, from the trees in his front yard. That he would drain chicken blood onto the, his doorsteps, and those kinds of things. But now other than that, there's no confirmation of any voodoo activity. Uh, it was rumors, and I, my understanding of voodoo is that the, the uh, power of voodoo is, is based on the belief of the people who surround you. In other words, if you firmly believe that I'm capable of, of doing voodoo spells, then you will more likely be subject to those suggestions, power suggestions for the master. So, no, I never saw any powers or anything to re reflect that he literally had voodoo powers or anything of that nature, but it was wide, widely believed. Yeah. Of course, a lot of people also believed that when he was killed, that he had on, I think the rumor was five pairs of underwear and two bulletproof vests. He did have on several pairs of underwear, but he didn't have two bulletproof vests. <laughs>